the Yeshuv second parliamentary election was held on December 6th, 1925. And boy, what a difference five years makes. In 1921, the United States ended its open-door immigration policy, forcing Jewish refugees from Europe to seek an alternative home in Palestine. By 1924, 40,000 new Jewish immigrants had arrived, almost double the total number of voters in the 1920 election. And whereas political parties were new and unfamiliar in 1920, by 1925 they had penetrated every aspect of life in the Yishuv. The parties established their own communities, ran their own newspapers, and even owned most professional sports franchises. That last part continues to this day, by the way. My favorite soccer team, Hapoel Tel Aviv, is the official left-wing team of Tel Aviv. Well, by 1925, there was a new party in town. Two years earlier, the British had separated Eastern Palestine into the Emirate of Transjordan. A few years before that, King Faisal of Syria had promised the east bank of the Jordan to the Jewish people, but his family had fled there when the French invaded Syria. In response, Assemblyman Zev Jabotinsky began a new conservative Zionist movement called Hatzoa. Its mission was to resist socialist domination of the Zionist movement, to resist British imperialism in Palestine, and to establish a Jewish state on both sides of the Jordan, with Jews as the ethnic majority. But they weren't the only new party. The Haredi faction, now rebranded as Agudat Yisrael, boycotted the election when the other parties demanded that all women in the Yishuv be allowed to vote. And as a practical measure, the number of seats in the assembly was reduced to 221. And here are the results. Ahdut HaAvodah came in first place again with 54 votes, followed by Hapoel Hatzair with 30, Hasfaradim with 19, Hatzoar with 15, and the Hebrew Women's Association with 13. The remaining 90 seats were divided amongst 40 other parties, most of which received only one seat. Despite Jabotinsky's hopes of a conservative revolution, the Social Democrats actually did better than last time. David Yellen remained as head of the Jewish National Council, but in reality, it was David Ben-Gurion who effectively ran the Yishuv, and Jabotinsky's methods of resistance would only become more radical. 